we'll be covering how to build an RTS for VR. Um, obviously, this is going to be a long tutorial, but the basic idea is that we're going to use uh, SteamVR and the Vive to create a really cool little RTS that we can make in a couple of days at best. Um, so this is going to be this, this tutorial is going to assume that you know a, li a little bit about Unity. I'm not going to hold your hand. I'm going to try and uh, document everything that I'm doing, but you're going to want to know uh, how to do certain actions like create a game object, add some components, and uh, a little bit of coding experience as well because this is uh, pretty coding heavy. But let's get started. So let's go to the asset store and let's find our environment. So for our, our environment, I've actually picked out an asset pack that's free that I really like. Um, this is useful for you know our game, whether you want to make a tower defense or a first person shooter, pretty much anything. So let's go ahead and import it, uh, the Warzone environment pack. And once we've done that, the only other thing we need to import is going to be Steam VR. And uh, basically the idea behind this RTS is that we want to have a bird's eye view of the battlefield. And we want to scroll around the battlefield, select our units, build our buildings, um, control our harvesters, things like that. So, so once you have Steam DR and the Warzone Environment Pack downloaded, um, let's actually use the default scene that they give us, this uh, preview scene, and let's take a look at what we can see. So if we take a look at the main camera, we have this nicely laid out base and environment with some mountains and things around it, um, and that's really cool. So our first step is actually going to be to create an empty game object and smash everything inside of here so that it doesn't take up our entire hierarchy view. So let's drag it in. Let's go ahead. I'm going to F2 to rename and call it environment. And I'm actually just going to delete the main camera as well. So once you've done that, um, what we should do next is let's go to the SteamVR prefabs folder and let's drag in the camera rig as well. So now that we have the camera rig, we're going to want to place it uh, we're going to want to position it, rather, so that we can actually see our play space uh, beneath us and look at the battlefield as we go. So let's bring it up, and I'm going to put it at, let's see, one second here. I'm going to put it at 28.1Y, or 28.1X, 20, uh, 54Y, and negative 393Z. Obviously your values can change and it's not really going to make a difference and we're actually going to want to see exactly where we want the camera rig at the end because we need, we're going to need to test this in game. But now that we have the environment, the first step that we're going to take is going to be to implement some camera panning. So this is a really cool little thing that you guys can do um, and the idea behind this is we want to use the right controller to control the actual movement of our scene. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new script and we're going to call it camera pan. Alrighty. Alright, so once the Visual Studio is loaded up, let's take a look at the script itself. So I've already pre-written this script, so I'm just going to go through it with you guys um, to help you guys understand what we're doing and why we're doing what we're doing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a transform value that's going to control the actual player camera itself. Next, we're also going to need one for where we want to start the pan from, right? The pan being the left, right, um, 360 motions. And so for that, we're going to use a vector three for the start position. We're also going to store the delta, the delta being the difference between where we started and where we are on our drag. We're also going to need some bull flags, um, is pan, and I, yeah, I believe that's the only one that we have in here. And then the next couple things we need are the actual track controller, tracked object, and controller.device. So the idea here is that Every object that Steam, that Steam VR, the lighthouse is actually tracked, gets a gets an index, right? So you start with a tracked object, and you use the index of that tracked object to tell to tell your to use in your scripts and say this controller is the tracked object with index, you know, let's say one, and that's that that's going to let Unity and Steam know that okay, this is the controller that we want to use our script on. Um, so we get references to all those values and we're going to set them in our start function just like this using some get components mm -hmm. and we're also going to do this in the update function just in case we lose tracking on a device or if the index is ever null or something something goes wrong we want to have this so once we've done that um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this code so device axis dot get axis so device axis is what we've actually called our uh, controller steam vr controller dot device and we're gonna and we need to use this anytime we actually want to get uh, touchpad input. So 
what we're going to do is we're going to say device access dot get access dot x does not equal zero, or if device access dot get access dot y does not equal zero, then we continue. So the idea here is that if there's any sort of pad press, or if, if your any of your fingers are on the pad, what that means is that the get access dot x and get access dot y will not be zero at that moment. So if that's the case, what we want to do is we want to determine if the finger or touch is above the the halfway point or below the halfway point. If it's above the halfway point, then we want to get the camera rig's local position, right? So if we look back here, the camera rig's local position is actually going to be this transform position right here. And we want to then add a add increment the y value of the local position. So we're going to raise the camera up. And we're going to raise it by this rate, uh, touchpad rate. And uh, the only reason we've actually put serialized field is just so that we can actually see it in the inspector. Um, it's just an easy way to keep a private variable uh, in the inspector. So next, uh, we're going to keep track of our y distance, and we're going to change the actual camera position, and then we're going to duplicate that same code if the uh, if this if the finger is actually below the uh, halfway point of the touchpad. So that pretty much covers touchpad input. Um, you can use this for pretty much anything, but for our purposes, we're going to be using it to scale up and down in the world. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at okay if device dot trigger press. So this is pretty self-explanatory. So instead of using the device axis that we're using here, we're using just the SteamVR track controller component, uh, which I'll explain about in a second. So I guess we'll do that now. Yeah. So the SteamVR track controller uh, is relatively easy to understand, and it's much simpler to use than the track controller. The idea here is that if you just add a track controller component, SteamVR underscore track controller component, you have access to all these events and delegate methods that make your life much easier. So. An example of that is we can actually just use the bool to if device dot trigger pressed. So this will only be true while the uh, while the trigger is pressed. Then what we want to do is we'll say okay, well if is pan is false, so if we're not panning, let's start panning, and let's also set the start position of where we where we're going to pan from, right? And we're going to set that to the device uh, dot transform dot position. So once we've done that, we're going to get the current delta. So this will only fire once uh, when the device is when the device is pressed. And from then on, we're going to say, OK, the current delta is going to be equal to the transform position minus the start position times 5. And the reason we want to do that is we want to take the, the difference in the positions of the controllers from when you started pushing the trigger to when you are pushing the trigger now. We're going to multiply it by 5, and that's going to be the gain that we're going to give uh, to the actual camera rig itself as we move through the game. So once we've done that, um, we're actually going to set the camera pause dot y to ten. It looks like, and we're going to set the local position as well. And yeah, I mean, so this is a pretty pretty small script, uh, just pretty simple. So we got some inputs and outputs here that we really need, and just like that, if we all we have to do now is just drag the camera rig into this this transform, and if we hit play, you're going to be able to see yourself using the trigger and moving the hand while pressing on the trigger to move around the scene and using the touchpad uh, to move to scale in and out of the scene as well. Um, so that's I think going to do it for part one. Um, in the next part of the tutorial we'll go over uh, how to create a state machine which we're going to use for our left controller which is going to control unit selection, building management, uh, among other things. So stay tuned. Um, comments. If you guys have any comments or concerns, or if I went a little too fast, let me know, um, and I'll feel and I'll feel free to uh, explain uh, certain things and go over things in more detail if you need.